watch this little clip from one of my favorite podcasts, The All In, where billionaire welfare queens demand that the government come and bail out San Francisco real estate. Be back. Because the value of the buildings, the rent has gone down so much because there's so much vacancy. I mean, when these loans were underwritten, San Francisco had like a 5% vacancy rate. And now it's like 30 to 40%. There are just no tenants. Hmm. And then, you know, in parallel with that, Jason, you've got all these cases where you don't only have tenants or leases rolling, you have loans rolling. You know, again, if the owner of the building has either a construction loan or like a long-term debt and that needs to roll, they have to refinance it. Hmm. And if they can even get credit, which they may not be able to because of this crunch, they're going to be paying a lot more for it. So now all of a sudden, the income statement for that building doesn't make sense. Think about it. Your borrowing costs are higher and your revenue is lower. So now all of a sudden the building's underwater. So where does that end up? Well, they default on the debt and the bank ends up owning the building. So then what happens is you end up with, you know, all of downtown San Francisco owned by a bunch of banks. What are they going to do with it? They don't want to be in the real estate business. So they have to fire sale those buildings in a bunch of auctions at rock bottom prices, because by the way, there's no cash or liquidity out there. So who are the buyers? Who's the be? buyer? Yeah, I was like, Nobody. Exactly there right are no buyers. We have a 30% vacancy rate. There's no uh, renters. So so what happens? Detroit? Like, Is it just like a, a dead city? And then the tax base collapses the city because so much of the tax base is dependent on you know real estate. So listen, I think they're going to have to work this out. I don't think they can just let the free market take its course here because you're going to end up with the scenario I just painted. So I think what hopefully what happened maybe is that the the banks do some sort of deal with the real estate owners that you know they they blend and extend or whatever but in order to do that they're going to need to be backstopped by somebody and that's the fed Freeberg. nobody wants to move in there the commercial real estate in san francisco gee i wonder why that might be as david Sachs said maybe it's because they allow open air drug markets right outside the buildings maybe it's because there's crime in the city that is not enforced by the local da where the police don't even bother to take in shoplifters under 950 dollars because they are just going to be let off with that best a slap on the wrist if even that allow san francisco to die. Why? As a white person, would I want to go to a city, and I'm bringing race in because the advocates in San Francisco, the city council, wants to give reparations to black people. San Francisco, California, was not even a slave state, but they want to give each black person five million dollars, a house to be able to be purchased for one dollar, and $97,000 a year, and wiping the slate clean for all debts. This is a racist giveaway. This is judging people based on the color of their skin. And why would I, once again, as a white person, desire to move into San Francisco? In fact, if I'm living in San Francisco, I'm going to jettison any property that I have there and get the F out because that's over $600,000 per family payable based on the color of one's skin. So my point is, allow the city to die. Allow the free market to work itself out. You cannot continue to bail out people that are making horrific decisions. If I eat too much and I get fat and I'm unable to run in a race, then that's my problem. You don't get to take some of my extra poundage and put it on to other people so that I'm nice and fit and trim again. No, because I'm just going to grow obese, obese, obese over and over again, no matter how many tummy tucks I have. And the same thing applies to this city, to these progressive states like California, like San Francisco. I lived in the Bay Area. I lived in Los Angeles and I have left these places for good. I'm not going back because things aren't going to get any better if you keep bailing out the fatties, if you keep taking the poundage off and giving you a tummy tuck every time you are just metastasizing society by allowing horrible policies to continue. And these guys are all billionaires and they want the government to come in and bail them out. And I agreed with David Sachs originally when he said that depositors at Silicon Valley Bank, maybe, maybe they should get a break because they shouldn't have to count for the fact that opening up a checking account is a risky proposition. And I agreed with him, but now he's calling out for the bailout of San Francisco commercial real estate. Yet, comrade, yet, comrade, you are way too far for me. I kind of sided with you over Vivek Ramaswamy in the debate, even.
regarding this, but you have completely destroyed your position as being on sound footing with calling for the bailout of San Francisco real estate. Uh-uh, no way. You allow the brush fire to get rid of all the dead branches, all of the London breeds, the Gavin Newsoms, allow their policies to go to the hell where they are dragging down society rather than having society try to prop up the falling city of San Francisco.